guys and welcome back to another video. This one is called Protecting Your Creative Life or we're going to talk about how to protect your creative life more specifically. So why this is so important is because without protection our creative life becomes like a tiny little new sapling in a windstorm and it's subject to so many different kinds of weather events, animals trampling through, things that, you know, birds coming down and like plucking it out of the sky before it's ready, earthquakes, tsunamis, like the, all of these kind of natural and man-made disasters that could take us out and take it out before it's had a chance to fully bloom. And this has happened to me a couple of times. Um, it's happened to me as a woman and you know in my own personal development and growth journey I've had experiences of like growing growing going up boom growing growing up boom having been taken out and it's also happened with creative projects and in my creative life so I've experienced things where it's like I will create something and I'll have an idea for something and I'll start like putting effort into it and I'll start manifesting like little pieces of it I don't sometimes I don't even know it happens like sometimes it's like and this is, you know, we get to a place sometimes in our creative life where we look back and you guys know I talked about it in my last video. I'm reading Women Who Run With Wolves by Clarissa Pinkola Estes at the moment. And she talks about how there's this one story in it called Bluebeard. And in that story, it's incredible. If you haven't read it, read it, just go and read the book. In the story, um, Bluebeard is a man who seduces a young girl before she's had a chance to come into the fullness of her womanhood. And long story short, I'll let you read it, but he ends up locking her, or not locking her, he ends up leaving her alone in his castle and he tells her that she's only, um, she's allowed to go in any of the castle rooms that she likes except for one. And of course, being young, being curious, being like, you know, having this incredible like youthful exuberance and energy, the second that he leaves, she's exploring the castle and she wants to go into the one room or I think her sisters come over and they you know encourage her to look behind the door and go into the one room and she's not allowed to go into and inside she finds the remains of his former wives and it's all about the damage and the destruction that happens in our creative lives and in our growth journeys when we allow ourselves to be taken for a ride by something that feels maybe a little bit fantastical, maybe like a little bit like a fantasy, maybe something that's like, oh, this feels, you know, really good and almost like too good to be true. Even when there's a little bit inside of us being like, this doesn't feel right. There's something off about this. And I want you to think about, I mean, for you guys, for me, I've certainly had moments like this where I haven't been able to tell except in retrospect. And it's really just a matter of like then surveying the damage and allowing ourselves to kind of be brave enough to walk through that, like that guarded door to see what's behind it and to take stock of the things that we've lost. You know, the, the wives in this scenario, the bodies of his former wives in this scenario are metaphors for all the places in our lives like not to kind of spoon feed it to you guys but you know they're metaphors for the things that we it's a lot you know it's a lot more self-evident when you actually read it in the context of the book the larger body of work but it's like we you know they're metaphors for the things that we have let go like the creative projects that we've never put time and energy into the relationships that we never nurtured for me it was like what was behind the door for me the lives ugh, not the lives that I could have led because I mean could have and should have like just they're so unnecessary like why torture ourselves with that kind of thinking for me it was like I feel like just looking at the the state of disarray of the gifts and skills within me there's been a couple one specifically that I'm thinking of for me a moment of looking behind the door was after I kind of finished, I mean, finishing uni and, you know, having spent so long investing time and energy and effort into something that I wasn't going to use, like a skill set or a, 
you know, a career path that I wasn't going to travel down. And then understanding that actually, like, you know, my gifts are so much more creative and they're so much more like, I've, you know, they've been undervalued in the culture that I grew up in and the internal culture that I created for myself and that I kind of internalized because of the world around me. So I hope that makes sense in the context of your situation right now. But for me, it's just kind of looking at, you know, I've been over here doing this and I, you know, my true self and my soul gifts and what I actually wanted to do was over here kind of like being neglected. And it's just this moment of reckoning with yourself. And I've had a few of these actually. I feel like there's one that's like a deeper... Yeah, there's definitely a deeper one that's kind of coming through now. It's a feeling of like, it's a feeling of like having, feeling like you've wasted so much time in this one particular path. And there's definitely ways to reconcile this within yourself. Um, I know I've certainly reconciled a lot of really kind of what seemed to be like really tragic events and circumstances. I've kind of reconciled them. By knowing that you know each and every experience is a learning journey each and every experience is a learning experience and we kind of like you know I didn't know what I didn't know until I knew it <laughs> I didn't know how important what I knew was until I kind of saw how far I went without it and you know how far down the path of self-destruction I went without my true self it's like you know however far gone you feel like you may be there are always you know ways to reconcile that with your le your own personal learning and growth journey. And I don't mean like sleep it under the carpet, but I reconcile, I actually mean come to peace with it. Like, you know, achieve actual true, like not like, oh, it's fine. Like we just won't think about it. it. That's not reconciliation. Like I mean like come into actual true peace and alignment and like well being within yourself, even knowing what you know and having experienced what you've experienced. It's like, I can actually be okay with this because I, I can see how this led to this. And I have an awareness of how this fits within my greater journey. And I've also like, I cherish the lessons that I've learned from that experience. Like I really, I have this like sacred reverence for the experience. I've mined the gold where I've needed to. I've taken the, you know, the pearls of wisdom that I sleuthed from the wells deep within me. And I've like, you know, I figured some shit out. And it's like, I've got this wisdom now that I didn't have before. And yeah, it might've cost me a hell of a lot. Yeah, it might've been really fucking painful. Yeah. The gap between where I thought I would be and where I actually am right now is huge and you know all it like it might be just like unbelievably gut-wrenching to feel this like almighty chasm within you of like oh this is where I could have been and this is where I am it doesn't matter you have the knowledge now you have the wisdom you have the experience you've been brave enough to look behind the door take stock and let's move forward like there's only so much time you can spend in that like cavern of almighty, like that almighty chasm before you just cut it. Okay, like let's pick the pieces up or let's leave them and then let's move forward together. And by together, I mean like as a whole woman, like as a whole human being, let's walk the rest of the fucking journey. Cause you know, we've got like in the book, Clarissa talks about, um, the author talks about how our lives are multi-volume sets. It's not just a single chapter. So carry on there are more chapters to live there are more parts of your life to explore and to discover um and this time and this you know feeds into beautifully what we're talking about today this time i will journey with a new understanding and a sense of like sacred reverence for how important it is to protect my creative life so i've i've paid the price i've discovered the cost of you know not safely guarding my creativity and you know the things that i really truly love and now I'm going to start walking out the path of actually like genuinely loving and protecting them. So how do we do this? Um, we've kind of talked about, you know, what happens when we don't protect our creative life, i.e. destruction, i.e. neglect, i.e. everything decay like all around us. And you can feel that and you can feel it in, I can certainly, I felt it like, yeah, it's just, you know, it's, I'm going to use the analogy of the river because I feel like it's such a beautiful, it resonates with me, water sign. So I love water analogies and I feel like it's just such a beautiful, it relates to so many, um, you know, different aspects of this. So again, women who run with wolves, Clarissa talks about how, I feel like we should be calling her that Mizestes or something like that. Like there's a mark of respect. Um, anyway, she talks about how our creative life is like a river and you know, the river can be subject to all sorts of contaminants. We can poison the river, the culture around us can poison the river. 
it can you know be blocked like the flow can literally be stopped you can have something that's like you know not enabling like allowing the water to come through to you um, so it just kind of dries up it can um, I mean she doesn't really talk about overflowing that I've read the river can catch fire like there can be so many contaminants in the river that it all of a sudden just explodes I feel like I've definitely had moments of that where it's just like it's not creativity it's just well it is but it's kind of like a really distorted version of creativity where I just want to blow everything up or everything kind of just blows up without me even realizing it and I'll create things that later I look back and I'm like what was I doing uh, but it's all I mean it's all part of the journey like I feel like I I'm trying now to have more of a sense of respect for the past versions of me and the things that I've created because the reality and the truth of it is I wouldn't be where I am today without any of those experiences and knowing that I've got such like a vast variety of like mistakes and kind of quote unquote failures and just like a, a vast array of experiences to look back on and draw from kind of gives it this like um I don't know it, it feels like it gives me this real sense of it makes us you know it makes us nuance it makes us wells of knowledge and wisdom and you know it's a beautiful thing to have like such an incredibly rich history and string of experiences to draw from in my own life it's cool it's really cool so try not to resent um the things that you've been through because they aren't making you who you are <sighs> when we talk about the river one of the things that stuck out to me the most was this idea of poisoning the river and having poison in the river so i don't know I've been seeing these things in the sky lately, and I promise this is connected. I don't know if you guys, where you are, you've started to see, because I know that they're all over the world. Like, I know this isn't just like an isolated thing. Seeing these like contaminants in the sky, um, chemtrails, right? It's, you know, immediately red flag conspiracy theory word, but stick with me. Chemtrails, like this white jet fuel streams that kind of last long after the planes have gone. And I've been looking into them. I've kind of seen them actually around here for a couple of years and, you know, been in and out of different um, theories around them. I think I've Googled it a couple of times. And recently it just kind of kept coming up with my awareness, coming up, coming up. We've, um, we've had a lot of floods here. I'm in the northern rivers of New South Wales. We've had a lot of floods. People are suggesting that, you know, the chemtrails are linked to cloud seeding, which is causing massive weather events, including a lot more rain. And this idea that, you know, we're literally being poisoned from above. And that there are things in our sky like chemicals and contaminants that are literally like you know raining down on us without our knowledge this to me is such a beautiful physical representation or like you know metaphor for the poison in the creative river and the poison in our creative lives it's something that you know it's not super obvious like most people i, I was literally i mean most people wouldn't even most people haven't you know even registered that you know the, the chemtrails exist or they you know they think they're harmless it's so it's kind of like insidious the way that you know if you think about you know a, a queen poisoning a king or someone doing that in like the old school Tudor era it would just be like a drop from a, a tiny vial into a goblet of wine over dinner it's not this overt thing that happens, you know, like a traumatic incident or a traumatic event where you can look back and be like, that's the moment everything came undone. It's just this like continual, consistent, insidious, invisible thing that happens, but it contaminates our creativity. And one of the ways that you can kind of tell that your creative river or your, you have kind of been... Um, I mean, allowing yourself to experience, yeah, to be poisoned, is there's a lot of lethargy in your creativity. For me, it's like, I, for me, there's there's been a lot of negative complexes. And by that, I mean negative voices in my head, voices like this feeling of self-loathing that arises when I go to sing, when I go to create something. We talk, I mean, I've, I've spoken a lot about resistance and we all know about resistance, like the the feeling that you just want to be anywhere other than exactly where you need to be like I don't want to be at my laptop I don't want to record this video I don't want to do that you know what I mean like this just sense of like it's just too hard I just can't there's too many like blocks in the way this is kind of a sign and a symptom that there's a part of your creativity that is being poisoned and like what poisons the river 
negativity, full stop, other people's negative perceptions, if you've got people in your life, or rather, if you're missing, if you don't have people in your life who are celebrating your creativity, who are lifting you up, and this is something that I've only really recently began to value enough to cultivate it consistently, people who fucking get you and support you and love you no matter what, and really truly like value and see the value in what you're creating. Not just as like a, oh, that's nice, she's creative, like, go you, woohoo, I support you no matter what. It's so much deeper than like this surface level encouragement. It is a deep, soulful connection to what you make and a reverence and a respect for what is coming out of you. And not even just as for you as a person, like a different, it's like there's a, there's a, there's a distinction, a really clear distinction between like, I love you as a human being and... I love the hell out of what you are creating. I see the value in it. I see how this is going to help so many people. I see how, you know, this has changed this for me. This has shifted this for me. This sparked this emotion in me. This made me cry. This brought me to tears. Like, it's that level of support and consistency. Without that, it's like, you just, you know, you, it, it feels like we're throwing things in, but we're also taking things out of the river. I don't know, maybe like it's like a extracting natural nutrients like you know these are essential nutrients that we need for the healthy flourishing of the river not only our own respect for what we're creating but the love and the respect of like dear sisters dear friends dear people who who really just like see us and get us and can speak that like life into us so absence of that poisons the river i would think that poison your creative river yeah negative complexes i this is the biggest one that I wanted to speak about today and they're coming up because I can feel the little things in my head. And this is one of those things, you know, voices in your head. I don't, I don't, I mean, I haven't heard anyone speak about it the way that, you know, it's spoken about in, in the book, in Wolves. It's kind of like, I suppose, you know, there's still, and I still feel this sometimes for sure. It's definitely in my psyche, has been, still is a little bit. This shame around like hearing voices and experiencing voices and having parts of your psyche that are still, that are very much like unintegrated and kind of unhelpful in a lot of respects. Like I've recently, um, you know, I've spent the last couple of months taking singing lessons. And for me, it was a really big step in knowing that, okay, I love my singing voice and I actually really want to develop this, this skill or this gift or this part of me. And I know it's going to contribute. I know I'm going to love it. Um, and I know it's going to contribute to the overall healthy functioning of my creativity in my life as a whole, my overall well-being. It was full on. <laughs> it was like actually going into those lessons. I mean, I expected some form of resistance come up. I expected some form of like, this is, you know, this is an edge. This is a stretch. But what I experienced was these like really intense, like little voices in my head that were saying you know, mean things and negative things. And also this wall of like self-loathing if I didn't do it right, if I didn't hit a particular note, if I didn't, ex you know, have, a, you know, if I didn't sound great. And <laughs> it's wild. It's so wild. And I get why so many people don't continue through that. Like I totally get it. It's challenging to be able to, you know, it's because thankfully I've done so much work on cultivating this unconditional sense of self-love and this is what we're all about here in this, you know, this channel and these videos. It's like, how can we be, you know, confident as creative women? And how can we stand up to those voices and move through those voices and really just like actually brush them off as the nothingness that they actually are? Um, the, the phrase that I'm using at the moment, again, it's in the book. Um, Begone, cabrones. And I hope I'm saying that right. Begone. There is no part of you in me. And it's like an incantation. So you're literally like, you just, you know, it's, they're nothing, right? They're literally nothing. And I've spent, oh my God, I've spent weeks and months and days and years unpacking in my psyche and picking through different things and speaking to different voices and doing, you know, parts therapy. And there's value in all of this. Absolutely. There's so much validity and kind of pulling out. I think I'm actually going to, um, oh, we'll talk about that later, but there is a lot of value in pulling or aspecting different parts of the psyche, having these conversations with yourself. If you haven't done it, there's so much, yeah, there's so much validity um, in that. 
And there's also a time when you need to just stand up to those inner, that inner critic, stand up to those voices and say, no, I am not going to let you stop me creating. I'm not going to let you poison my creative river anymore. You are not going to be the reason that I don't show up to my work today. You are not going to be the thing that keeps sucking me back when I rise up. You are not going to be the thing that like comes and shoots down my confidence when I'm finally feeling like full of myself and actually like I can do this, right? I am not going to allow you to poison my flow and to, I'm not going to allow you to take from me what I love. Like that's the, I mean, that's the, that's the bottom line of it. I'm not going to allow you to take from me what I love. And I'm not available for you taking away or, un or like undermining. That's what it is. Undermining. I'm not available for anything especially anyone, anything or anyone that is undermining or attempting, attempts to undermine the value of my creativity, the value of my offers, the value of my work as a creative woman, as an artist. That's protecting your creative life. And that's what you need to do. I'm going to read you this quote. If you wish to avoid Hambre del Alma, the starved soul, name the problem for what it is and fix it. Practice your work every day. Then let no thought, no man, no woman, no mate, no friend, no religion, no job and no crabbed voice force you into famine. If necessary, show your incisors. Seriously. Protect your creative life. It's these things, there's one more as well. It's our ability to guard and to safeguard what is important to us. Not in the sense of being guarded, not in the sense of having walls up. To keep other people out. But like, knowing when something is incredibly valuable and deserves protection and understanding that there are things in and of the world until you set until you stand up for them will continue to devalue destroy denigrate what is most special and important about you and to you our connection to this is a quote our connection to meaning passion soulfulness and the deep nature is something we have to keep watch over. Keep watch over your creative life. I, yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. That's the bottom line. That's all there kind of is to say. There are ways to do this, the ones that I've already spoken about, and saying the incantations, setting a time aside every single day, and not letting anything get in the way of that. Like, even if I, you know, have to, even if I have to, like, wrangle myself and, like, strap my, tie myself to the chair, again, that's in walls as well, but it's like, I experienced this when, right, when I was writing my first, when, whenever I write, not as much lately, like, it feels, you know, the... I, I understand now that the pull is there. Like the there's there's been enough like shift and movement through resistance that I can kind of, I feel pulled. I'm like oh I actually love this. Like I actually want to show up to this now. There's not as much um there's not as much resistance to move through. But in the beginning, every single day it was a battle. It was like the hardest part of creativity in the beginning for me 
was getting to my computer and actually opening a document and then actually sitting and staying with that document for long enough to create anything. Like I probably wouldn't have finished it at the time. I literally found this thing the other day in my notes and it was like sitting in a cafe and all of a sudden, you know, the guy for me, like, um, you know, addiction is one of the ways that our, you know, we can be distracted out of our creative purpose. And I, um, I find that sometimes like there's, there's a real, obviously a real link between addiction and creativity. And I spoke about that on TikTok the other day. This, um, I'll speak about it more in another video. Basically the, when I, when I, when I feel like I most want to, when I'm creating something really important, when I'm creating something that's like, you know, very, very close to the truth of who I really am and you know, I'm expressing my authentic voice. Often there's a, a flip side of that where I'll like, I'll have this moment of like, I want to go do something that's like really not conducive to my well-being. Like I want to go and, you know, for me in my past, it was sex and love addiction was my kind of vice. And so I want to like revert back to some of those tendencies. And yeah, so it's, they're all linked and there's so much more I could say about this. And like I said, I will eventually there's I'm still unpacking a lot of it but knowing that you know it's it's when we're the closest to creating what's like so important to us like the actual stuff that's getting to like the, the nitty-gritty of what we're actually here to do what we really need to say the you know our, our life's work our actual life's work that's the time when resistance is going to be the strongest and the hardest and it's going to come up try and distract you and do this and do this and do this and you know go back to that old addiction you know call up that old flame that old that old boyfriend that you know you had a ridiculously dramatic and tumultuous relationship with see how that's going like you know just try that one more time like it's you know there's so many ways that we kind of try and keep ourselves out of doing what's really important and we've got to be so aware of all of them and we've got to have the wherewithal and the discernment and the wisdom and the grace and I don't know what the word is, there's another word there, something to be able to actually bring through um, our real, our life's work and what we're here to do. So just know that if, you fa if you're facing, you know, the, the hardest resistance of your life, it's probably because, you know, one of the most important things that you'll ever create is about to, is about to come through you and is wanting to come through you. So commit to showing up every single day, no matter what, no matter how hard it is, doesn't matter. Just keep going, keep showing up. And know that also like setting these little goals for yourself of like, you know, back in the day when it was really challenging for me, I would literally just be like, okay, I've made it and I'm going to sit here for an hour. And if that's all I can do today, that's all I can do. Like an hour and I'm done. Like I'm stoked with that. I'm going to be so happy with that. And even if, you know, I've written a line or I've like, you know, whatever, I've done it. I've shut off all distractions as best I can. Sometimes I'll just write about the resistance. Like, I'd literally sit down and write about how hard it was for me to write. Doesn't matter. I was creating something. I was showing up. I was focusing um, and creating this, like, yeah, and creating. And it's this, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's the practice of doing that every single day. Awesome. All right. Protect your creative life. Um, love yourself enough to, to do it for you and to, to know that you're worthy of protection. If necessary, send out the wolves. Like, literally, like. I literally have been imagining that like there's a pack of wolves or my, my you know, my inner um, resources and my inner warrior is like, I'm instructing these wolves to go out and clear, like guard the river and like run, run the perimeter, run laps up and down the banks of the river and take out whatever needs to be taken out, guard it fiercely and just, yeah. Don't let anything fuck up your flow. Alright. Awesome video. Um, if you, yeah, if you want to get in touch, you know where to find me. And um, I will see you in my next video. Au revoir. Bye, loves.